What is good friends? Welcome back to another video. Yes, trying to pump up some content for you. By the way, it's Sunday afternoon. I hope that you had a great weekend. Let's talk about Air Force for a minute. Well, more than a minute. Uh, I feel like I didn't speak much about the Air Force lately. So uh, let me um, give you a few tricks, tactics, I'll explain you why my Air Force is built like that. And at the end of the video, I'm going to show you some in-game footage that will describe you what are my tactics and how we play the Air Force in my alliance. So without further ado, let's talk a little bit about what do I have right now. I decide to have two bombers and one fighter of the same Vanguard camp. Why is that? Simply because... I already have, already have, sorry, two units, uh, two ground force of the same camp, which uh, for, for a total of five units, that means I have a 15% firepower and durability buff for the Vanguard camp. If I had an additional ground unit, I would have my maximum camp bonus, which is 18%. So I, I went this way because I saw the benefit behind the camp rank, okay? But doesn't matter, Vanguard, Martyr's Watch, or Liberty, it really depends which, which suits your style of play. As for the fighter, they're not much different. Uh, in terms of bombers, yes, Vanguard and Martyr's Watch, they will uh, attack and track targets individually meaning that if you have a, a tank rolling you send your vanguard or Mar martyr's watch bomber they will take care of that target you don't have to worry about it they will track it for you and they will return to base either after destruction or if they finish their bomb run okay you only have to make sure that troop that target did not garrison or else your bomber will hover that base for 60 seconds and you may lose your bomber. Martyr's Watch are more effective against armor and Vanguard is more effective on any artillery. So the BM, the Howitzer or the anti-tank gun, uh, Vanguard is better. Liberty bombers, well, I have two B-17 Flying Fortress. I'm nowhere near a 7.2 unit yet. I'm working on it. The Liberty bomber is very popular because it's the, the best bomber for attacking structure, so bases. And they are ideal to attack a cluster of stationary targets. So if you have a bunch of ground units staging or, or uh, waiting to gather enough uh, units you send that bomber and it will do a lot of damage to those troops uh, perfect for like i said uh, blitzing bases defending against uh, groups uh, gathering liberty bomber is all is amazing for that it deals a lot of firepower but it got its limitation if you send a Liberty Bomber far away on a stationary target and he spots you, he just move from few grids and your bomb run is crap because it will not track any targets. So each of them have is, is force or strength and weakness, if I, if I can say. Regardless, like I said, work with what you have. Uh, I chose the Vanguard and I'm using them as much as I can. I will do quite the same amount of damage. I like the way that the bomber tracks the targets and why I choose two bombers rather than two fighters. It, it happened that the cards draw, um, how, how I draw the cards, simply the coupons. If you have two fighters instead of two bombers, that's amazing. I mean, you will score much more kills uh, against enemy fighters, that's for sure. Me, personally, I like to attack the, the hunters, the lone wolves, the troop that will try to go behind your line and attack your reinforcement. 
I don't have to chase anyone with my ground units. I just send my bombers and I know they will do the job, right? So that's for uh, the unit choice. Now, as for the officers, I'm not going to go into details about those. I just want to give you a, a highlight. So the officers, uh, well, so this is my officer pairing. I got Pixie and Brisk Eagle for my strongest bomber. I assign Heaven Savior and uh, Wings of Glory for my fighter. And uh, for my weaker bomber, I have El Cartero and Witcher as officer. So to see the complete list of officer, this, there it is. You have a total of seven officers. Two officers specialize in fighters. Sorry, three officers specialize in fighters. So Elvis, Heaven Savior, and Polar Phantom are specialized in fighters. You have... El Cartero and Golden Pixie, they are specialized for bombers. And you have a, a Brisk Eagle and the Witcher that are universal. If you want to focus on dogfighting, okay, you want the absolutely strongest officer for dogfighting, go with... Uh, Heaven Savior, no, not Heaven Savior, sorry, Wings of Glory and Polar Phantom. They will give you the best buff against uh, enemy fighters. If your role is to support other bombers, go with Heaven Savior. Okay? He may not have the strongest skills to shoot down planes, but he will give a good amount of buff to your friendly bombers. You will reduce the anti-aircraft firepower uh, to protect your friendlies. Basically, he rips, but don't expect him to be your top ace pilot uh, for dogfighting, okay? If you wanna go for a safe bet, go ahead and max uh, Brisk Eagle. She deals that the critical strike is good for either bomber or fighter, but when you user on a bomber visually you see more or strike in action because once the officer's skill kicks in and she will deal that additional blow of 50 percent you clearly see that your target will uh, get weaker f much faster so ideally if you have a strong bomber and you have that officer on duty on on your bomber you, if you attack let's say a howitzer you can completely destroy that target only three passes so that's a huge benefit as for the witcher uh, she, she's not a game changer i mean she's all right but i don't see her in action i don't see the benefit of having her or visually at least i don't see that she's that good she's all right but nothing special I, I, as a universal officer, I wouldn't focus on her first. I'd rather pick uh, Brisk Eagle. Now for the bomber officer, both of them are good. Uh, Golden Pixie was the first officer I unlocked because she was available before El Cartero. Her, she's amazing because she will give you one additional strike. So usually you have four strikes she will get a she will give you a fifth strike that's very useful when you're chasing ground targets and that last strike is the strike you need to completely destroy uh, the tank or the artillery so very useful on that part and she will also do an accelerated bomb run so if you compare uh, two different uh, bomber officer your airplane leading by golden pixie will bomb that target Quick, uh, much quicker so that means less exposed to enemy fire right more effective if i can say as for el cartero many forget. like him for the liberty bomber because you you see the big visual effect of all the troops and flames but he works as good on the vanguard and martyr's watch Bomber. Once again, when you chase a target, let's say you chase the fast target, a light tank, a medium tank, 
he will deal great amount of damage, but, not, but on top of it, he will immobilize your target for two seconds. So it will be very frustrating for, for your enemy trying to uh, escape, but he won't be able because he will get immobilized for two seconds. And if on top of it, he's getting chased by another fast unit led uh, by uh, Winter uh, uh, Huntsman, <laughs> so I forgot his name, Winter Huntsman, that will also immobilize, that target will just won't go anywhere. Okay, very, very hard to escape uh, with this officer on duty. So this is just a, a, some highlights about those officer. I'm not gonna go in details about them, probably because you know them already. I'm just um, telling you why I use them. And depending of where you are in the game, you may not access all those officers. Um, Witcher, Quietly. you will un unlock her by uh, by the time you do your first theater of conquest in San Francisco. This guy, you only unlock him after 182 days. Same thing for Polar Phantom, he's a new officer. Brisk Eagle, yeah, no problem. This one, this officer was one of the first. Same thing for him. So basically, if you just started the game, you won't have access to all those officers, but it doesn't mean that uh, you're, you're handicapped. There's a lot of good officers you can unlock right away. So this is for the officer part. As for the, the tips and tricks, I'm gonna roll the in-game footage. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do voiceover so you know what I'm talking about. So stay tuned, guys. All right, so this is in Moscow, last Moscow actually. Now you see me in, in action with the fighter. Uh, first of all, if you see the yellow circle, I know it's hard to see because it's yellow and white, but that yellow circle, everything, every target inside that circle is getting engaged. So the trick with the fighter is not to engage multiple targets at a time. Always one by one. You will reduce the damage this way. Now I engage that target. I'm going to move to the right because if I move to the left, I may engage two targets at once. So I'm going to take care of that weaker airplane like so. And you will notice that unfortunately for the enemy, all those fighter planes are sleeping. This is the most common mistake about fighter planes since they don't automatically return to base you may forget about them and yes i did that mistake multiple times i know you did and you're gonna redo it again that's how it is when there's multiple um, event or there's a lot of action you may you or you will forget about those fighters and by the time you realize it they're all dead so i'm gonna move down to this fighter plane use a 3000 k power and this friend he is helping him so there's a friend coming and as soon as he will come and help that airplane i'm gonna pull back because now i'm engaging two targets at once i do not want that why simply because if you notice i'm 1200 kilometers away from my base so by the time i uh, train some reinforcement they will take about 10 minutes to reach their destination uh nobody got time for that so i'm gonna wait till he pulls back like he did and i'm gonna finish this airplane in a timely fashion and then there is the this light tank he wants a piece of me he is not strong enough to deal okay. enough uh, or significant damage but still i'm being extra cautious i do not want to lose Gosh. anything i'm gonna rather than going for that plane at the bottom i will uh, support okay. my friendly bomber you see the teal circle on the ground so that's his position i simply Gosh. fly on top of that bomber okay. and the officer will simply buff this bomber and reduce the anti-aircraft uh, capability of the enemy 
simply by hovering. So that's how you play as a team. You want to support each other. That's what I'm going to do right now. I'm going to shoot down this airplane, not only to suck up kills, but also to support my team. So at 17 fighters, I'm down to one. I engage and shut down multiple targets already. I'm doing great progress and now you notice there's not much air force opposition in the sky probably because the enemy is sleeping or only a few of them are online that's a trick that's a sign that you could conduct an attack a strike and you will have a very few opposition now once again that bomber is conducting a bomb run i'm gonna assist i'm gonna hover on top of her position to support just like that so even though I'm not doing any kills I'm still helping that's how you want to play with uh, heaven savior as a support fighter okay so that's the part of the, that's the fighter part of the sequence now I'm gonna to go to the bomber sequence now if you notice we play some tags because we will blitz a base why because we can either it's a show of force or it's your alternative way to uh, level a base uh, in the theater of conquest usually if you play four against four your enemy will try to support themselves by activating each other and um, making the burning process very difficult. Uh, you know, you, you remember, if you do, if you don't, then you will. Uh, trying to destroy a base with ground units while this base is already activated, it's, a, it's, it's rather difficult. You may lose a lot of troops, especially if this player knows what he's doing so conducting a bombing raid you avoid all this trouble just have to make sure that first of all you have support uh, fighters patrolling and that no ground force um, stay close to that target you will see uh, this player here uh, Mr. Nightmare that he got his light tank here is the base now he's going to get engaged by the base aggro. He's going to lose a bunch of troops. Why he did that? I don't know, but do not do that. Or if you see that your friends are sieging a base, don't send your bomber. You're going to um, you're not going to help anyone here. The base will get activated and he will shoot down all the enemies on the ground. Uh, he's not gonna like you so do not interfere with ground units when you are bombing a base that's a no-no you don't do that if it's another enemy unit another base doing so yes go ahead but always be careful not getting engaged okay the best way to deal with that is like I'm doing right now so this slight tank is engaging my friend I'm gonna simply send my Vanguard bomber that's his duty. He's gonna target one single unit. You see, good damage I did. So that's how you deal with those um, pesky little buggers. Okay. So everybody got its role. You have R4 making sure that uh, they place tags uh, with a, a, a time. So everybody will bomb at once. That's how. To be effective that's how you're effective uh, during a bomb run sometimes you may pick a different time or what i'm trying to say is let's say that you bomb at uh, 2150 and the next bomb run don't make it 2151 uh, please allow some time for your friends to retrain your bombers they take quite a while to train okay and by having a fighter plane hovering above the base if that plane takes the base aggro that means the bombers won't get attacked right the base can only fire at one unit at a time so you rather have the aggro firing at your fighter so the bombers don't uh, don't get weakened and make their uh, bombing run less effective 
So this friend, like this guy Kanda, he's trying to support his friend. We can attack him with ground units because the base will not fire back at us. You see? So now you see the next target, 2152. Boom! That means we are gonna bomb this base. And this base is inactive. Okay? By the way, guys, if you want to learn a trick, a good trick with the Vanguard and Martyr's Watch bomber, please click on the card in the upper corner. There used to be two tricks. I didn't real upload the video. One trick got a um, one trick doesn't work anymore since the, uh, an update. But the last trick, the one more trick, still works with the Vanguard and Martyr's Watch bomber. Go click and find out about that. So okay, so this guy is still trying to help. He is gonna send out his artillery. I'm ready for my rocket truck. I'm almost, ooh, almost gone. The officer skill is gonna kick in. There we go. Ooh, all gone. Now I did a mistake. I should have engaged that howitzer and uh, go south instead of going left. Regardless, I didn't lose everyone. Nine troops remaining. Nah, could be worse. I am glad to. Having strong air force will help you tremendously because it gives you another dimension to your attack, right? Like I said, you don't have to worry about the base aggro for ground units when you use bombers and fighters. And usually the winners out that the allies that win is the one that have the stronger air force. That's a fact. So do not neglect your air force. I know that you may not be uh, at this point yet in the game. You should start with three solid ground units, like I said, and then work on your air force to have at least one decent bomber and one fighter. So you, you are uh, useful in the battle. So this base is about to get blown up. So that's pretty much how we conduct our bombers run. Uh, and guys, if you have any comments, just let me know in the video. We're gonna start San Francisco very soon. By the time, if you have any question, let me know. I'll do my best to answer everyone. Guys, have a great weekend and see you soon.